Hello everyone, today we are going to discuss oncogenic DNA viruses and we will discuss human papilloma virus HPV. Okay, there are two types of HPV, high risk HPV and low risk HPV. High risk HPV are type number 16 and type number 18. Low risk HPV are type number 6 and type number 11. High risk HPV are implicated in cancers. Low risk HPV are implicated in genital warts only, which have a low malignant potential. High risk HPV are implicated in cancers. Example, squamous cell carcinoma of cervix and anogenital region. And even 20% of oropharyngeal carcinoma are associated with HPV. So which all cancers? Cervical squamous cell carcinoma, anogenital regions mean squamous cell carcinoma, oropharyngeal carcinomas are associated with high risk HPV, genital warts associated with low risk HPV type 6 and 11. Now, what is the difference in uh, the, the types which causes benign diseases and the type? The type which causes malignant diseases. So differences we have seen in benign warts, the HPV genome is in a non-integrated episomal form. And in case of cancers, the HPV genome is in integrated form into the host genome. So it means that integration of the viral DNA into the host genome is important for the malignant transformation. As we have seen in benign cases, it is in non-integrated form. It is in episomal form. And in case of cancer, it is integrated with the host genome. Okay. Now the oncogenic potential of HPV is related to two viral genes, E6 and E7. Now let us see these two genes. The E7 proteins, what does it, what it does? It binds to the RB protein, retinoblastoma protein, and it displaces the E2F transcription factor. If you have, if you know this, that ret RB gene, it sequesters the E2F. Okay. So it acts as a break. Now what happens? It binds to the RB gene, RB protein, and it will displace the E2F so the E2F can bind to the region DNA and it will uh, promote the transcription so it can happen. So it will promote this progression of the cell cycle. How? It will bind to the RB and will displace the E2F which is normally sequestered by the RB. Second thing what it does is it inactivate the CD key inhibitors. Okay, like P21 and P27. So cell cycle inhibitors, join CDK inhibitor, it inactivates them and simultaneously it activates the cyclin E and cyclin A. So it promotes the cell cycle progression by inhibiting the inhibitors and activating the activator cyclin D and uh, cyclin E and cyclin A. Now what about E6 protein? E6 protein has a complementary effect. It binds to the P53 which is a tumor suppressor gene and causes its degradation. Also it leads to degradation of BAX. BAX is a pro-apoptotic gene. It's a, it causes apoptosis. So in this diagram we could see HPV E6 it inhibits the P53 gene and P53 because it activates BAX gene and causes apoptosis. So so now no apoptosis why because e6 has inhibited p53 and so uh, it has also inhibited backs and we have seen it causes degradation of the two now e7 also inhibits p53 one thing and one we have seen that it inhibits the rb e2f and it releases normally rb e2f causes the growth arrest but now because it will inhibit the rb e2f and e2f will get released and it will progression of the cell cycle and it will cause transcription it will cause the growth uh, and also we have seen that inhibits the uh, cdk inhibitors like p21 normally p21 it inhibits the cyclin d and cdk4 but now p21 itself is inhibited therefore the cyclin d and uh, cdk4 will be stimulated so the cell cycle will continue okay so uh, e7 how does it work it inhibit the RBE2F interaction, it inhibit the cell cycle inhibitors, CDK inhibitors P21 and it inhibits the P53 also. So we can say this, that high risk HPV, high risk HPV, it encodes for some oncogenic proteins which inactivate the tumor suppressor gene like P53 which activate the cyclin like this CDK, cyclin D, CDK4 and inhibits the apoptosis we have seen in BACs. So actually it is inactivating the tumor suppressor gene. Now there is no suppression of growth. It is activating the cyclins. Therefore, it promotes the cell cycle growth and inhibited the apoptosis. Therefore, it will lead to no death of the cell. So ultimately, it will lead to the tumor progression. Okay, so this is about high, uh, this is about HPV in which we have seen that HPV is implicated. The high risk HPV is implicated in malignancy and why it is Im implicated because it gets integrated with the host cell genome and how uh, there are two main uh, genes E6 and E7 which are uh, implicated in the carcinoma. So this is all about uh, HPV. Thank you so much.